Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a popular bait feeder. This one is the Okuma Avenger. It's the ABF 50, Avenger Bait Feeder 50. It's a 50 size reel. It's popular in the surf and it's popular for drift uh, or live lining baits. And this one's just tired. It, uh, it's time for service. It's uh, got a switch here. It's a little bit difficult to bring up to release. When you go into bait feeder mode, that's going to release the back end of the spool. It's going to allow you to twirl that spool, let the line out, and as soon as you trip, well, that's going to lock in your spool. It's going to allow the top drag to hold the pressure for the fight. And uh, this one, the switch is a little tight, and the rest of the reel just feels, well, like it needs some oil and grease. So I'm going to show you how to do this one. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. And if you have a reel that you're working on, uh, maybe you're stuck or something, you can use this video to do that as well. Uh, we're going to start by removing the external pieces. And the first thing I notice is that this cap is turning. So when that cap turns, it means that the handle goes through and you have to remove the cap, which is a cap from the screw. Somebody over tightened this one pretty seriously, but I just used the wires to get this started. So those of you that are new to my channel or maybe even watching it for the first time, I would ask you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, you're going to see me work on all kinds of fishing reels. This one's a spin fishing ocean reel, but I work on all kinds, spinning, bait feeders, um, bass reels, ocean reels, you name it. If it's out there and it's uh, a fishing reel, chances are you will see it over time on my, uh, on my channel. And subscribing is the best way to to know that it's out there and to uh, watch it if you're interested. While well, we pulled that through, this is the through bar I was talking about. It goes through the main gear and I'm just going to put that screw right back into it so I don't lose it. You'll notice a couple of things. I wear a protective glove on my hand to keep some of the greases in that off. And off camera, I have a little parts tray. It's nothing more than a fast food container that uh, holds pieces and parts. And that's where I put all the pieces that I take off the reel because, well, I want to know where they are when it's time to put them back together again. Well, we know this one's working pretty rough. It's kind of hard in the throw. I'm thinking it's probably loaded with salt. I can see evidence of the salt off on the, uh, the joints here. So I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on there. I'll use that just to kind of dissolve the salts. That should help with the movement. And now I'm going to remove this. Now this is a single piece. and. Uh, what you want to do to remove that arm is to, well, the penetrating oil is slippery, isn't it? It's another reason why I wear that glove. You want to take the screw out of that uh, piece, and then very carefully we're going to just kind of pull it apart. Now, I haven't seen one of these break on this reel. I've seen them break on other reels where they're kind of a harder plastic, and uh, it's just dried out over time, but just be careful. I'm going to use a little screwdriver just to see if I can't pry it up, and that's all you need to do. Pry it up and off the post, and you should be able to do the same on this side. And just remember, when you've got to put it back on, it's kind of a separated piece. And there is a little washer in here if you do lose it, uh, or if you do find a little washer and you didn't know where it came from, that's where it comes from. So that'll go into my parts tray. And then, now that opens up the removal of the case. But if you look on this case, you're going to notice that the case goes up and under the rotor. Right there. So you can't remove the four screws and just pull this case off. you got to take the rotor off first. To do that, you're going to remove, remove the spool. You do that by unwinding the drag adjuster on the spool. And then you can pull the spool up. Put both of those underneath. We'll look at the drags later. And this one, uh, this one has a little click ratchet and a shim washer on it. So pull those two up. You, you'll see that there is a transparent washer on there. Very hard to see, but notice that it's on the top, and that's going to control the line spooling. So don't lose that one. Once you do that, you can come in and remove the little set screw. And then we can remove this 
uh, rotor nut. So the way I do it, I got a lip on this, so it's going to be hard to get a wrench on it. But I'll move it so that the axle shaft is all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to go for a deep socket, and I believe that's going to be a 12 millimeter socket. Just have to find it. Yep, and then with that 12 millimeter socket. Now you want to make you're never sure if these go tighten or loose. In this case, this is a reverse thread. I just felt it. So only take a short crack, and then to remove this, you're going in the opposite of you normally would. You're turning it in a clockwise manner. Once that rotor nut is off, we'll put that into the tray. Now we can remove the rotor. Simply walk it up. And this is why you couldn't get that side plate out. You were tucked under the lip here. And that's never a good thing. While I have this, I'm going to take a moment to oil the seams of the bale. You do not need to remove a bale when you're servicing a reel unless you're having issues with the performance of the bale like a broken spring. In this case, it's working fine, so let it go. And then I like to flood the bottom here with that Z-bar, which is inside, which is the trip lever. With that off, we're going to put that to the side, and we'll come over and we'll take the four side plate screws out. Now, these side plate screws are Phillips head or flat bladed, kind of a machine tool, I'm sure, does this. And what I like to do is I like to take the four screws out and make sure that those four side plate screws are all the same. Now I can see evidence right here as I look at these screws that there's been a lot of salt use and a lot of dirt buildup. And that's probably my thinking in terms of why this reel is sluggish between uh, getting salt encrusted and uh, the other part being the uh, buildup of dirt and junk. Well, it's going to stop it from performing optimally. And then the other side. Uh, probably internally we have um, lost the greases and oils, they've evaporated. So those four screws are the same. I'm going to pick those up and put them in my parts tray. Now we should be able to remove this side plate. And right now I'm probably thinking, why did I squirt it with that uh, penetrating oil? Because it's just slipping all over the place. But that's one way to do it. All right, I'm going to use a razor knife, a utility knife, just to separate the case. And you want to be careful here. Don't go scarring the paint. Don't be aggressive with it. Just slide it in as a little wedge. And you'll be able to remove it. you got to come up over that little trip mechanism piece there. So the closer you get to that, and, and I can see that there's a lot of just accumulated stuff right on there. Uh, that's the issue there. All right, we have a seal. Just keep that seal in place. Make sure that your side plate is nice and clean. And for a, um, a bait feeder reel, this is one of the less complicated reels on the market. And uh, it is uh, governed by the traditional. We have a trip here. We have points on the main gear. When you trip this lever into bait feeder mode, it's going to sit like this. And then that little point, when you're rotating it, is going to come around click it back off. Good place to tell you to take pictures. This is an ideal spot right here, right now. And the reason for that is if you get lost, well, the pictures are going to help guide you back. Also, you can take advantage. You can go out on the internet. This is a poor example, but you can go and get this schematic. I think this one came from realschematic.com. And that'll show you the exploded view of this. One of the things you want to note in the case, and it might be hard to see, but in the case, there's a spring right back down in here that's holding the tension on the engage, disengage uh, lever there for that bait feeder mode. So if you find a spring shot out somewhere, that's where it belongs, right in the cavity in the bottom of that case. All right, we're going to continue. We're going to remove the little clip that's holding that axle shaft on. It's a, it's a double-sided clip. And you'll notice I use a series of picks or micro screwdrivers or things that just to kind of help you do it. And this is what you have. You have a double C-clip with a bar between them. And uh, that's holding in the axle shaft. 
around that cross wind block. So let's go remove that axle shaft now. That came out nice and easy. And that's always a good thing. It tells you that your axle shaft is not bent. I'm going to wipe that off with the old pieces. And now we can do some more of the pieces here. We can take the main gear out. Get the bearing off. There's two shims under the bearing. Pay attention to these. That's They need to go back in that order. I'm going to try and remove the crosswind block. Crosswind gear. And then the main gear. So what this is kind of confirming is that we've lost a lot of the uh, lubrications. This is the little plug for the handle. Should be able to get the bearing off. So I have the bearings, I have the two shim washers, and now I have my main gear. And you'll see all of the main gear's grease is really sitting inside the main gear right now. That's to nobody's advantage. And I am noticing that that grease is discolored, so it's got some, some dirt and grease in there, uh, in the grease itself. All right, so that's relatively clean. Inspect the teeth now, make sure that they're all uniform by view this way. Same thing with the back drive for the oscillation gear. And then turn the gear this way and make sure that all the crowns on the gear are good as well, both sides. Looks like there's a little bit more grease on there, so I'm just going to use a paper towel and take that last piece off of there. Okay, so that's the that's the gearing. Do the same thing on the crosswind gear. Inspect that ultra dry, right? There's no grease in this one. And then put those in a safe place, like the parts tray. I was spinning these bearings as I was taking them off. They seem to be fine. I'm just going to oil them, let the oil seep in. They're shielded. They're not sealed bearings. I'm going to take those and put those in a safe place as well, which is my parts tray. And now we can come up top and we'll deal with the main bearing gear and the pinion. There's three screws that hold it on. Here's a good place to take a picture. I think that you probably can get away with this one because there's a post here. But notice the orientation on the collar. You have three screws and at about 9 o'clock is the, the cover for that anti-reverse override. That's an important piece in this. So this is one of those reels where you can actually find an anti-reverse override. Uh, there's a lot of reels on the market today that have given up on that feature. And uh, this is an earlier version where you have that. On this reel then we have the anti-reverse override which is held in by a small screw or a small spring on a post. So pay attention to that. You don't want to lose that as you remove the stack. I'm going to take those pieces and put them into my parts tray. And as I mentioned, a good place uh, for all of this is taking pictures along the way. And that will help you as a reference. Well, this is a good place to take a picture in case you lose, lose the spring. Now, I just shot one here. This is a little tensioner spring that goes right in here. It nestles behind here if you've lost it or if you've had that pop out. And we're going to just take this spring for the anti-reverse override off now. And I'm trying to hold my, my finger on it here because I don't want this one to shoot. This one's a lot harder to find than the one that just shot off. Okay, I'm leaving that attached here, but if it, if it does somehow become detached, I'm going to note that I have a kind of an L-shaped bottom on this side for that. I'm going to pull the whole assembly out now, which will include 
the gears. I guess I didn't have to pull that out. All right, there's a roller bearing in here you do nothing with. That's your anti-reverse clutch. Make sure it's clean. This one's certainly clean because, well, everything seems to have evaporated in this reel. But that'll give you access to the bottom here. If you had some dirt in it and the like, go ahead in there and clean that up. We do have a little bit of grease on the side, so I'm going to take care of that as well. All right, this is our assembly that we wanted to get out. We have a couple of shims for the spool. We have the main bearing. We have the collar for the anti-reverse clutch. And I want to take a moment to clean the tracks of this pinion gear. And this becomes the same thing that I just did with the main gear and with the oscillation gear. You're checking the teeth to make sure that they're uniform and not chipped or bent and you're looking at it from both sides, the ridges as well as the orientation of those teeth. You'll notice when I was doing this I was using a hard brush and I was brushing it so that the dirt that's in the grease comes onto the paper towel and uh, doesn't go back onto my bench for the next reel I'm working on. Alright, we're going to use some fishing reel grease now. I use pen precision reel grease for this. I use an artist's brush and uh, I make sure that well, we get, get enough grease on there. What's enough? You don't want to overload, it's just going to throw it off to the side, but you do want to make sure that for the most part you've covered that. Next up then, in reverse order of the way we took it out, would be to put this back on. I want to oil that bearing. And this is where a picture before you disassembled this would have helped if you needed the help. That way, uh, if you were wondering, does the bearing go below or above that, and so on, that would have helped. And then we should just be able to slide this back in. Oh, well, we can. Unfortunately for myself, I took that little spring off and I didn't have to. Well, we're going to have to go put it back on now. So I'm going to go hold that. I'm going to grab a small pick or a screwdriver. Or sometimes you can use a little micro pliers. I'll try with the pliers first. Okay, got it. So you want to seat that all the way on the bottom of that little pivot point. You want to make sure that your piece is in there. And the best thing to do right now is to test it. So we should have a functioning anti-reverse. We do. And then if I throw it to that over override position, you'll see that the spring comes out. And now I can backpedal the piece and then return it the way it should. And we're okay. Before I go any further, I do want to get that little wing that shot out and put that right back in there. That goes with the point facing backwards if you're curious how that seats and it seats when that little clip is even with the case here. All right, let's just uh, do what the rest of this is all about. So when you're doing a fishing reel and the service on that fishing reel, it's all about taking the reel apart and then cleaning, inspecting, re-oiling and re-lubing. So here's a question I got earlier. This is, this is an interesting one. So you'll notice that we have two slots in the side case here. And I got a question. Somebody has a reel. They have plastic bushings and the plastic bushings have these tabs. And they said, can I upgrade my reel to bearings even though bearings don't have these two studs on the outside? And the answer is yes, you can. And it's obvious from the Okuma design here that uh, they do multiple types of assemblies off of this and uh, they must use plastic bearings with studs at some point. So there you go. All right, we're going to take the main gear. We're kind of going in reverse of the way that we brought this out. And we're going to kind of put the piece on the main gear on both sides. And then I think what I'll do is I'll go down below first. And I'll deal with that drag rather than having all of this together and finding out that, uh, well, that you will fall apart while I do this. Let's just grease this up and then go down below to the, the drag. The drag system is held in by a clip. You'll see the, the clip on both sides here. Again, another one of these little micro drivers or the like should be able to en enable you to pull that out. Just kind of have to walk it out. You'll see eventually 
that you do separate it. That was just a, a micro driver. Then it's going to pull that cup all the way out. And everything else just came out with it. There you go. I was going to take this out in a nice organized manner, but that didn't happen. It just all kind of fell out. Here's that spring I was talking about. If you happen to remove this trip lever here, that spring is right back in there. And that's how you're going to reset this. All right, the bottom is a carrier. You have a, a plastic carrier. You have a screw, which enables you to tighten and loosen. And you have a spring drive. That's all in the bottom end of the cup. On the top end of the cup, this accepts the um, axle shaft. You have one drag washer there. And then you have one drag, drag, drag washer below here. And these are all in good condition. So, Okay, so we've inspected the drag parts. They're all fine. They've been cleaned. And I find the best way to reassemble the drag is to put the rest of the reel back together again and then reload that drag. Uh, just because the axle shaft helps to hold it easier. All right, we're going to do that then. We have a plate that we need to reinstall up top here. Remember what we said about the orientations. We're looking around 9 o'clock for this. We're also looking for that little stud. That's going to hold the, the retention plate in, in place. And we have the three screws, which I'll go to my, my box for. This, this is part of a series of reels that Jim dropped off. He dropped off about eight or ten reels for me. Uh, he asked me to do the service. And I get questions frequently, do I work on reels uh, by mail? And I do. And uh, if you're interested in having a reel serviced, well, I will certainly uh, provide you that service information. If you send me an email um, to the Second Chance Tackle, which is on the business card at gmail.com. But uh, the whole purpose of this channel really is to teach you how to do it yourself. But uh, again, if you're not up for it, if you don't want to do it, if it seems too complicated, well, I do provide that support and uh, service for you if you're interested. All right, I'm going to do the same now. We're going to just kind of work our way back up now. We're going to do the teeth on the crosswind gear. You want to do everything. You want to do the back side, which is going to ride against the stud in the case. You want to do the teeth. You want to do the face because the crosswind block is going to ride on that. That's what we'll put in next, the crosswind block. All these pieces have been cleaned. So we'll get some into that groove where the stud is going to work. And then we'll lay that stud, we'll lay that crosswind block in the stud. Next up then, we've greased and lubed our uh, main gear. Put that back in. And I may have got ahead of myself. We want to put the, the rotor back on. No, we don't. Remember what we did, we had a lock in the case. So if we put the rotor on at that point, uh, we're going to have some trouble. All right, we've cleaned the axle shaft. Light coating of grease. Don't put a lot on. You're only going to squeeze it out. The axle shaft goes in next. And now you can better see that there's two slots here for that C-clip that's going to hold that axle shaft in place. So we'll go get those. Line it up so that you have access to it on both sides. Flip it over so that it's against that crosswind block and then push it in to finish seating it. I'm going to need a wider screwdriver. There we go, you have a nice clip there and that's properly seated. All right, now I can put the, the balance of this in because it's going to be easier to guide the pieces in. So we'll go ahead and put that drag assembly in. Push that down. I'm going to put our clip in next, and that clip rests in the grooves in the case. And if this is kind of getting off camera, it's, it's one of these things where I need the sight, sight for it. Okay. Now we can grab our adjuster. Okay, I had to take my glove off for that. And uh, 
you didn't miss anything. All we did was we reseated the drag washer piece, we set the carrier, and now we want to take that little set for the hole tight and put it here. Now this reel is missing. There's another little button that goes on top of this that this reel is missing. I guess that's further evidence that the, um, well, it's, uh, it's had a relatively hard life, I guess. All right, so that's all we need to do short of replacing the bearings and the shim washers on the main gear. There's the two shim washers. Those come from the factory. Sometimes you'll find one, sometimes you'll find two like here, sometimes you'll find three. In all cases, uh, if you're going to change that main gearing, you, you need to relook at the piece with the um, shims, and uh, you may have to play around with it. It may not fit it perfectly. All right, I'm resetting the gasket. Now we can go ahead and put this back in. That's a little water seal. They're doing their best they can to keep the water out of the case. All right, we should be tight there. I heard a nice firm snap. You want to check the seams all the way around, make sure that that's uh, working properly. Then we go back and get those four case screws. We know when we took these out that they were all the same screw, so when we go to put them back in, well, we'll do that too. While I'm looking in my case, I'm noticing that there's a little bit of corrosion on this knob, so it doesn't hurt for me to go ahead and put a little bit of penetrating oil on there, see if we can't kind of let that work its way in uh, while we're doing this. So again, I would encourage questions. I always encourage folks to work on their own reels, but I would encourage you questions. Maybe you started one, maybe you have a project and uh, you're stuck. Uh, well, if you leave a question in that comment section, I'll try to do my best to answer it for you. Okay. Now, the truth of the matter is on this reel and many of these bait feeder reels, those rear drags seldom wear out. And the reason for that is the this is not a rear drag fishing reel, so it kind of complements that. It's only being used when you're in that bait feeder mode. And when you're in the bait feeder mode, what it's doing more, uh, more than not is it's just tempering the way that the shaft is going to release. Okay, let's go ahead and put the rotor back on now. We've oiled all the pieces. We've made sure it's clean. Go reseat this, go get that rotor nut. Remember this came off in a clockwise manner, so it's going to have to go back on in a counterclockwise manner, or what is referred to as reverse thread. And then I'm going to use my socket to tighten up the slack and flip my wrench over so I can do one more turn here. There you go. You can give it a spin at this time, see how it's doing. It's doing fine. All right, very good. All right, we want, I like to put the trip mechanism on next. Remember we had the screw side and we had a, a dead end side. Put the dead end side in first. Okay, we're getting to the end now. Once you hook the one side, set the other side and put the screw in. And then we can set the handle. And we'll go up top for those drags just to make sure that that works equally well. I know it's not important uh, if you're doing your own reel, but if you're doing somebody else's reel, always note what side the handle came out of. Some customers set them up for a left-hand crank like this. Some set it up for a right-hand crank. We had that little button that goes on the screw inside the handle there. Go ahead and put that on. And then just re-thread this. Now this was over-tightened to begin with. I imagine it was probably a little bit of slop in the the handle that they tried to overcorrect for. That can be done. I like to hand tighten it. Anything more than that usually causes a problem. Boy, did that smooth out. Wow, nice performance there. All right, we have a set screw that has to go on that rotor nut now that we've tightened that up. So let's go put that in. And again, a schematic or a picture will tell you that that's where that one belonged. Next up then was the click ratchet. 
On top of the click ratchet, you have a small plastic washer, which is hard to see, but that's your spool leveling shim. And if you had your, your line gathering all to one place rather than another, well, then that's where you would find that uh, you needed to add or, or reduce by one. All right, this is the little clip that holds the water out of there. Then we have a little star clip that's a spring, so be careful as you remove that. And I'm not sure if I remember, but I'm thinking that we have felt washers in here, and we do. So there's nothing wrong with felt washers. A lot of manufacturers will use a um, felt, some will use leather, some will use a carbon tex or a hybrid. Felt washers get oil. I just got that question the other day. What's the, the best way to lubricate different washers? Well, felt washers get oil. That's to keep them nice and flexible and uh, to prevent tearing. If you're finding that you're tearing up your washers, and uh, it's not uncommon in felt washers, but if you find that you're tearing them up, you can uh, do better with carbon tax as replacement washers. But if you're not tearing them up, there's no need, right? The, you got to trust the manufacturers on these. If they're telling you that this is going to support a max drag, let's say of 12, 15 pounds, and uh, it's supporting them and you're not having any trouble with your washers, there's no need to go out and do that upgrade. I find felt washers in these, in the uh, earlier Pen Fierce and Pen Pursuit lines, in Shimano reels, so don't think that it's a, a bad technology. It is a, it's a technology that's proven and has been useful. All right, now the little cup goes on for the water retention. We'll go ahead and put the spool back on. The braid is on this. It wants to seem like it wants to get trapped in there. Put the star adjuster back on now. I don't like working on reels with the line on. And if you're doing your annual service, I would recommend taking the line off because, in my opinion, the line should be changed every year. And I've seen plenty of reels come in where the line hasn't been changed in 10 years or more. You can just tell by the discoloration and the brittleness of it. That's only going to result in losing fish, right? You're going to get snap-offs. Then you're going to blame the reel. All right, well, here we go. We have a Okuma Avenger 50. We've just tightened down everything, make sure that that top drag works. It does. A whole lot smoother than when we started. Let's flip that arm up. Do we have the reverse? We do. That's that little spring we were talking about in the case, among other things. Trip it. It's come down the way it should. There we go. All right. Up. Eight feeder mode. Down. Lock in. If you have any issues, you adjust your your rear drag to tighten that in bait feeder mode. There you go. It's locked in pretty tight there. And that's it. That's the Okuma ABF 50. That's how to take it apart, service it, and put it back together again to go fishing uh, in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. And again, I encourage you to subscribe. That helps you and helps me and helps my channel. To everybody who's a first responder and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you're doing. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.